The financial press has been dominated this week by former star fund manager Neil Woodford. After being sacked from his flagship equity income fund, which is being sold off with cash return to investors, he took the decision to wind up his multi-billion pound fund empire. Coming up in this episode, three lessons for investors following the Woodford demise. I'm Martin Bamford and here at Informed Choice we help remove the stress associated with money by offering a clear explanation of your choices and options. It's been a big week for personal finance news with the demise of Neil Woodford and his fund management empire absolutely dominating the news headlines. Before I share some lessons for investors, here's a brief recap on what's happened. Woodford's fall has taken a little while. He launched Woodford Investment Management after leaving Invesco Perpetual back in April 2014, where he had become established as a star fund manager. At his new firm, he launched the LF Woodford Equity Income Fund, which has become the source of his troubles this year. In April 2015, he launched the Woodford Patient Capital Trust. This investment trust launch set a new record for the largest ever fundraise by an investment trust, with £800 million of subscriptions. It invested in small and unlisted companies, which also became a feature of his original fund, albeit with a 10% cap on non-listed stocks. And then he launched another investment fund in April 2017, the LF Woodford Income Focus Fund. When the funds were launched, they came along with a great deal of hype. The press shared really encouraging headlines, including on BBC News, who ran with Neil Woodford, the man who can't stop making money. This is money ran the headline, my best investments are still in the future, says legendary fund manager Neil Woodford. Along with the press, investors were encouraged to climb on board the hype train by fund supermarket and discount broker platforms who added the Woodford funds to their best buy lists and gave the man some really enthusiastic support. The equity income fund saw trading suspended in June because of a raft of redemption requests it couldn't meet because holdings were held in illiquid investments. Investors had to then wait to access their money as Woodford and his team attempted to reposition the portfolio to create some liquidity. And then this week, the administration administrator behind the fund decided to sack Woodford and wind it up, returning money to investors. Woodford was not happy with that decision, saying, I cannot accept nor believe it is in the long-term interests of investors. Later on the same day, Woodford announced he would abandon his two other funds, that's Income Focus and Woodford Patient Capital, winding up his investment management business in an orderly fashion. Dealing in Woodford Income Focus was subsequently suspended as investors rushed to pull their money out of that fund. In a statement, he said, We have taken the highly painful decision to close Woodford Investment Management. We will fulfill our fund management responsibilities to WPCT and the LF Woodford Income Focus Fund, and once completed, will close the company in an orderly fashion. I personally deeply regret the impact events have had on individuals who placed their faith in Woodford Investment Management and invested in our funds. What next? Well, investors in Woodford Equity Income, now called LF Equity Income, will have to wait until at least mid-January at the earliest before getting their money back. Woodford will continue to charge his management fees in the meantime on the other funds, and that's a decision he's been strongly criticised for. I've been quoted in Money Week and some other publications this week with my prediction that investors in the Equity Income Fund should brace themselves for a 30% to 70% loss once their money is returned in the new year. And speaking to Money Week, I said, I want investors to be prepared for a range of outcomes, up to and including a 70% loss of their money in the fund, which I view as a worst case scenario. Investors should factor this range of outcomes into their financial plans to understand the potential impact on achieving future goals. So what can we learn from the demise of Woodford? Now here are three lessons for investors. Firstly, don't believe the hype. I've been trying my hardest since this news broke on Tuesday to avoid saying I told you so. But back in April 2014, I published a blog post titled Why I'm Not Backing Woodford Equity Income, in which I shared my concerns about factors like capacity, cost, and the level of hype surrounding the fund. Now, while the consumer and financial 
Press and some fun supermarket platforms were fawning over Neil Woodford in these fund launches, there were plenty of more sensible voices in the advisor community urging caution. I said back in 2014, with Woodford, all we have seen now for several months is hype. This is a well-oiled, super slick marketing machine at its very best, securing glowing press coverage and convincing several discount brokers to pump out promotional material on its behalf. Secondly, know what it is you're buying and remember that this can change over time. Woodford Equity Income was nothing like his previous funds, Invesco Perpetual Income or Invesco Perpetual High Income. I've had one investor question my up to 70% loss prediction, asking me on Twitter this week, how can an equity income fund lose 70% when the market is close to the top of a 10 year bull run? Income funds are sold as fairly low risk for retirees. And I agree, equity income funds are usually considered to be more defensive forms of investments, less risky than equity growth funds. But within the Woodford Equity Income Fund, there were all sorts of illiquid investments, effectively unlisted stocks that represented a massively high risk to investors. When you invest in a fund, you need to understand what's in the fund and you need to understand the risks involved. What's held within an investment fund can change over time. Funds often move between different investment association sectors as their components parts change and that's a good warning sign for investors. If the fund has switched sector, should you switch out of that fund? That said, please don't rely on fund sectors alone to inform risk. Do your own due diligence. Thirdly, don't take advice from people who give information. If you bought into Woodford off the back of press headlines or marketing messages from discount brokers and fund supermarkets, you've got nobody to blame but yourself. It sounds like the Financial Conduct Authority are currently investigating the role of so-called best buy lists in this whole debacle and I know of lots of investors who bought into Woodford on the strength of what they believe to be recommendations, some made by the largest fund supermarket platforms, which were in reality sales and marketing promotions and information. If it's not a personal recommendation, it's not a personal recommendation. That means no recourse for poor investment advice. The press and the fund supermarkets do not know about your personal goals and objectives. They cannot know what's best for you in order to achieve your financial goals. Only an independent financial advisor can make investment recommendations which are suitable for you. So when it comes to investing your money, don't believe the hype, do understand the underlying investments in your funds and do seek proper independent financial advice. Three key lessons for investors in the wake of the collapse of Woodford. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Informed Choice Radio. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you're watching this episode as a video on our YouTube channel, please press the like button and leave us a comment below as well. Let us know what you think about the Woodford collapse. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford and this is Informed Choice Radio. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.